is going to be so interesting, dude, when it's kind of weird talking about this. But just because I remember when I was talking about Final Fantasy Rebirth before that came out, we had a couple of rages about that one. What the freak is that? But it's going to be interesting when Smite, man, you know what? I, I'm actually surprised that also Diablo 4 ever came out because I remember when I was super hyped for it coming out. Then it came out and I was completely disappointed immeasurably but it's going to be interesting when smite 2 comes out i don't imagine it's going to be really that different from the original smite i used to like smite used to have sexy women in it used to just have dudes in it now it's super gay yeah yeah i, I wonder what they're going to do with the the supposed sequel i i doubt it's going to be much of a sequel but however much of a sequel it actually is i do wonder what's going to look like as a game smite 2 because i wonder for one how much are they going to uglify the women? Specifically Neith, because Neith has a freaking stacked rack, bro. Holy crap, that chick is effing hot. You got chicks like Nuwa, Aphrodite, they're all freaking stacked. They got ginormous freaking breasts. They look freaking hot. Well, now the developers are libtards, exclusively libtards. Their audience is now exclusively full of libtards and just tards in general. Yeah, they have many shapes, forms, and sizes of morons that play their game now. But, oh, and it makes for a terrible matchmaking experience, I'll tell you. Don't even get me started. Bad memories. I don't even want to talk about it. Trying to take a game competitively and all the people that you're playing with, they just want to, they just want to be little... Uh, douche nozzles about every little thing that you're doing. Oh my gosh, cannot stand it. You'll be the best performing player on your team, for instance, and you will literally have the worst performing player to sit there and tell you that you're terrible at the game. They will actually do that. It, the, the high level of cognitive dissonance that exists with these uh, these types of players is asinine. I, I can't even begin to tell you or make sense of it. What the frick is wrong with them? Don't know. Um, it's not it, it's not that they're just children. I mean because you know some of them are adults who think like children, but It's not that they're children, right? It's just that these are just bottom of the freaking barrel people human beings. I mean, they're they're horrendous terrible uh, matchmaking pool Terrible sportsmanship etiquette you have people who have an unfair advantage on the enemy team and they will gloat over their victory and it's like dude literally two people on the enemy team they just decided to up and bail they weren't even losing they, they were just douchebags and they left and you're gonna tell the enemy team that they suck like wow okay you know you're dancing on a corpse that uh, yeah uh fit filth absolute filth human beings play that game and uh including the liberals so which includes the developers too so I, I hate, with a fervent passion, I hate Smite. Um, I hate the players. Some of their balancing decisions, I'm not typically a huge fan of it. It's, it's kind of difficult to really balance a game, but golly, I, I hate the players in that game though. That, that's the number one thing I hate. They'll be douchebags to you for no good reason. You will be the best performing player, and they'll just start beating on you and being like, oh, you know, you're crap, you're this, you're that. They'll just start saying a bunch of stuff to you. And you're just like, dude, dude, I don't have to be here. I literally don't have to be playing this game right now. If you're going to just, I am the best performing player. I'm literally trying to help you out, trying to help out the other teammates. If you're not going to show me some freaking due respect, because I'm not being a jerk off. I cannot be in more places than one. And when an enemy player on the enemy team can one shot you and I can't one shot them, there is very little. It's not, oh, you're bad at the game, bro. You're so bad. Oh my, you're so, such a trash player. Bro, there just comes a point you can't do anything about it. And at some point, the matchmaker chose that you should just lose. Your teammates aren't very good. I mean, there are literal games that you will have. You're playing, let's say you're playing ranked. You will go with a, a bronze, literal, bronze player, silver, or gold player as a platinum or even diamond level player. And by the way, because of the matchmaker, I could never get to master 
I didn't, I couldn't. I got very close many times, and then the matchmaker would just start boning me. It would start putting these freaking people who are not at my skill level. It would put people of higher skill levels on the enemy team. So, and like, I love competitive experiences. I love testing myself and having, uh, I like, having an experience where you have to get better, right? Because the point of a multiplayer game should be what? to challenge yourself and make yourself better. You should run into lobbies where it's like, frick, I have to actually improve if I'm going to win. And maybe I do lose this one, and next time I get better or whatever. But there's so much inherent imbalance with this, these games, it's very difficult to actually treat it truly competitively because someone's gonna use an OP character that most characters in the game, they just cannot out damage, they can't outperform. And if it's two OP player uh, characters, going up against each other, well now you have a new issue, which is, okay, so who gets the luck of the draw? Because sometimes you just get unlucky. Sometimes you throw out, throw out an attack and stupid crap happens and you somehow miss and you're like, yo, I totally should have landed that, what the frick? That, that'll happen sometimes. Other times, dude, um, outside of like a random attacks that'll miss, other times it's just that the numbers don't play out in your favor. That also just happens and it plays out in their favor instead. So you're always gonna have inherent imbalance and that's always going to make it where there's never truly a good gauge of skill. I was always playing on uh, console, by the way, never on PC, doesn't matter. It just sucks, because I, I tried for the longest time. Stupid decision, by the way, but still. I tried very hard, I tried to, I tried for the longest time to get to masters and it just wouldn't work. And the amount of douchebags and the amount of egotistical losers. You know, I don't use this term often, and it is a stupid term when other, uh, when specifically women use this term, they have no idea what they mean. Um, they, they never know what their own words mean. But you do deal with legitimate narcissists. And what the narcissist, it's having cognitive dissonance about when you're being illogical, stating that you're logical, right? So you're, you're, you're legitimately wrong about what you're saying or what you're talking about, but you continue to have your position. It's completely illogical. It's not just, oh, difference of opinion. No, it's not those kinds of things. Oh, God, dude, liberals are so freaking stupid. They don't understand these kinds of concepts, but whatever, they're morons. Um, anyway, but this is the problem that you'll run into is that these are narcissists where they are objectively wrong. Truth and reality disproves your argument and they will sit there. Like, they'll hold people accountable for losing a match. And those people are not responsible. It's like, dude, that guy's the best performing player on the team. What are you doing? He tried to do everything to help you when you were failing. When you were losing in your lane, that guy was trying to help your freaking biatch anus. You're being a little douchebag. And you have no appreciation for the players who are willing to go out of their way to help you out who's biatching and complaining while everyone else on the team also needs help. You're sitting here and you're just whining at everybody. They won't get that. They'll be raging uh, narcissists about it and act like they're the only person that exists in the world and that matters and that there's no other team except me. You will deal with freaking uh, Jock Anus players like this. And that's why I hate games like, like Smite um, the players are immensely immature. Um, I don't even know if they're children. doesn't matter, because children used to be better... Be if they are children, children used to be better behaved than what you will see in Smite. Um, we do have cultural decay. Absolutely. We have so many degenerates nowadays. Uh, behavioral degenerates, whatever. Go down the list. Just, just losers. They, they're fervent and they're everywhere. This is the reason why I hate Smite, because the people are just horrible, and people don't have a teamwork mindset. If you want to see a case study of like, oh, I wonder what's going wrong in the West. It's like, okay, play a video game like Smite. Play it. Because you will realize, oh, frick, that's what's going wrong. We literally have people who think they're the frickin' Shiat, and they're not. They think that they are the end-all be-all of value in the domain of reality. And they just happen to be raging retards, is all they are. 
again, they think that they're the, the best player in, in a freaking video game. And it's like, dude, you are dragging down the team. Consistently, you're not helping out your team. Consistently, you're dragging down the team with terrible decision making. And you, when someone else has a better decision or uh, idea than you do, you don't listen to them. You're like, no, keep doing what I want you to do. Keep doing what I want you to do. It's like, no, what you do gets everyone killed. And they're like, no, screw you. You're a freaking idiot. Do what I want you to do. So you just, and, and this is why I hate Smite. You end up fighting your own team because they don't know how to work with you. They don't know how to work together. They're freaking idiots. Most people playing that game are freaking morons. They will not only hold you back, but they will do everything in their power to diminish the quality of a match. So it's not just you going up against the enemy team. You have so many Jack Anuses, retards, who will be fighting you tooth and nail just to have a normal match, just to have simple teamwork. Because guess what? Guess what is a part of a competitive experience? People screw up. People make mistakes. There are anomalies. You will make mistakes. You will make errors. Because also part of, like, sometimes you really should be able to do something about a mistake. But there is a problem. There is a dichotomy about mistakes, which is you only have so much energy. There's only so many things that you can consider counteracting, right? You only have, right, one mouth. So you can only speak one sentence. You only have one set of hands. So you can only fix so many problems at any one given time. So there comes a point where you can only create so many um, countermeasures against so many potential issues or problems. There ends up being a point in time where you will be overwhelmed. So when you have a, a jock on you sitting there crapping on you, being like, hey, you know, why did you screw that up? Why'd you screw this up? Hey, man, why can't you play the game better? Blah, blah, blah. Right there. They're going down your freaking neck. They're just they're being a raging retard on you and they're being a douchebag. You have no other. You, you can't do anything. You have no other choice but to sit there and say, dude, I can't do, I can't, I literally cannot be two places at once. I cannot stop you from freaking dying in left lane, and I can't stop the other guy dying from in right lane, or right, or let's say you're, you're in solo lane, right lane, or whatever, actually, depends on the side you're on, doesn't matter. So then you're in solo lane, and you're just getting constantly decked by three players, because mid- solo and jungle are attacking you multiple times because they're trying to stifle your performance in the match and you have a jock on news player could be any player could be a guy that's on the other side of the map and they'll just start trashing on you and being like oh you're a trash player oh you're you know you're the the, the match has been lost already he's feeding he's feeding guys you have these freaking losers who will say that you're a you're a terrible player it's like dude what the frick? I'm trying to play in my lane. I literally cannot farm and level up. I will fall behind if I do not farm my lane. And I can only sit under the tower in such a way until these guys come out of the freaking jungle. Because, again, the movesets of certain characters are so powerful, they can just show up out of nowhere and just obliterate you in two seconds. And when it's multiple players jumping you at one second, not only can some of them just outright one-shot you, but... Some of them are afforded to miss some of their abilities when there's other players hitting you at the same time. So you've got three characters hitting you with their ability sets all at one time. Some of them are afforded because there's so many players hitting you with their attacks. Some of them are afforded the, the, the ability to be crap at the game and miss their attacks. Because ultimately, there's so many players throwing their attacks at you, you're just going to get overkilled. That's what's going to happen. There's nothing you can do, and when you just die over and over, and you can't help it, you're going to lose. You're going to lose your lane, and you're going to have to basically play the late game now, if you can even make it to late game. It's it's very difficult to even do anything about that, and sometimes, right? It's your team that is at fault. They're the ones who screwed up. They're the ones that really need to be taken accountability, but instead they're going to say, you need to take accountability. It's like, when, right? There's nothing you can feasibly do. This is the kind of bullcrap that you will deal with in a game like... <clears throat> in a game like... Smite. You will have these stupid dichotomies, stupid problems. Um, you will have certain issues where it's like, I can't feasibly do anything here. I'm just set up to lose. Sometimes you just have outright players, as I said earlier, bronze players on a, on a team of platinums, which is below diamond. Diamond is beneath masters, and masters is at the top. And even on diamond, you'll have a gold player, which is beneath platinum, 
you'll have a gold player. And it's like, this guy is not at our skill level, at least in this season or even the previous season. But somehow he's ending up in here because the matchmaker is dog water horse crap. And don't even get me started about the, ho the matchmaker because the matchmaker intentionally will put bad players on your team and that's a whole other conversation let's put it short it's a socialist matchmaker it will find crappy and good players and put them on the same team so if you're a high performing player let's say me i have a match where i get 30 or 40 kills i am creaming or i get 16 kills and i end the game at like 10 minutes okay i'm doing really well what will they do in the next lobby they will throw a player that couldn't even get one kill last game it's not because they're playing a crappy character it's not because they're using a crappy build it's because the the player is a jock on he's a douchebag and he just ruins every lobby he gets into that happens a lot a lot and when i say a lot i mean that can happen for half of your matches or more it's really bad the matchmaker again socialist matchmaker because what they do, they try to create equality between the good and the bad players. If you're a really good, overperforming player, they'll start putting slowly bad players into your matchmaking. Just so that's like, okay, if you're really such a good player, you're going to carry your lobbies. That is impossible. When you end up in a lobby where you have a douchebag who's just going to do everything in his power to undermine the rest of the players in the lobby. And not only that, but basically he's not a team player and he's going to be constantly berating everybody. Because, like, listen, there's a time... And, and that's the issue. The matchmaker will just put legitimately bad players on your team. Either they're douchebags or just bad players. And then that's going to make the 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 uh, covert or the sleeper cell douchebags. They'll come out of the woodworks. Or that'll just give the douchebag more ammunition. to just And, and he'll just start keyboard warrioring the rest of the match. And it's like, dude, it's literally now a 4v5 in this match. You literally are just, you're spamming your keyboard instead of helping your freaking team because you want to trash on the guy. Yes, the matchmaker put a crappy player on our team. What the frick are we going to do about it? You sitting here and being a douchebag to the freaking guy. And there's a time to be a douchebag, you know, but holy crap. These guys don't have the discernment of when you're a douchebag. They will sit there. Because again, there's certain people, it's like, dude, what the frick are you doing? Like, you're legit, you're legitimately, you're just not helping the team. It's not even that you're a bad player. You just, you're so brain dead. You're not even helping your team. That's when you be a douchebag. It's like, yo, player, why the frick are you just dozing off every two seconds? You're playing a competitive video game and you're literally, the whole team is saying, go attack the fire giant. And the guy's just sitting there, la dee da, just gonna smoke my freaking weed. You got freaking losers who smoke weed and play these competitive video games. You're a freaking loser in real life. You're a loser in general. Get the frick out of the video game if you're not gonna... And it's not always about weed. I mean, sometimes they're just legit brain dead. It doesn't matter. Why the frick are you playing a competitive video game? People want to have a legitimate competitive experience, and then you're ruining it. But see, you have so many problems. You have losers. You have people who are just legitimately stupid. You have people who do not belong in your skill bracket. You have the douchebags who make up a majority of the issues. Let's just be honest. And by the way, everything I'm detailing to you right now... Just multiply, multiply, add on, add on, add on. 80%, if not 90% of your matches will suck when you're playing Smite. Very few of your matches will be you playing with people who are capable of teamwork, where people are mature and they understand, oh, hey, you're making mistakes, or hey, you're having a bad match. Okay, I get it. I'm going to try and do my best. And then you're trying to do your best, but you're just failing. Or maybe you're trying out a new character and you're, you know, and or or you're playing a character that is directly countered by another character and you cannot help it. You're just going to lose the match, right? You're just getting completely railed. There are just matches where it's like, for some reason, you just don't have any luck. It is insane. Nothing works for you. It's a freaking fiasco. And y instead of people just being mature and understanding, okay, this guy's, you know, things aren't going well for you for maybe g good reasons or whatever. Right, guys, you know, let's try to work together. Let's hold out. But like, then you also have issues there with some people. They try to be mature about it, but they don't have that high a level of maturity or they don't have much tolerance, whatever it is, for like mistakes and issues. And so what'll happen is, say you, you're getting creamed in a match, 
and you're trying your best to like you're trying to uber farm which means you're gonna have to spend 15 minutes in the match uber farming because for whatever reason things that you cannot control you you're you, typically you're a good player but this match it, like there's literally a bunch of things you can't you can't control that are ha that's happening but like they'll sit there and they'll try to be uh, team working with you and they'll get pissed off that you're trying to farm as fast as humanly possible so that you get to max level because if you're not max level you don't have the maximum level on your items and you don't have the maximum levels on your skills so you're going to get cream and also your stats you're going to get creamed by the enemy if you ever fight them so then you're sitting there, so you're trying to scramble together your levels, you're trying to grind up so that you can get to late game and actually be of use to your team. Because if you're not and you're in team fights and you're fighting with lower levels, you're literally going to get one shot in the fights. So it doesn't matter how much teamwork you, you try to verbalize and orchestrate amongst one another, it's never going to work. You're always going to get one shot by the player that for some reason they're just playing the character that can one shot you and you're like I don't understand how I'm getting one shot but I literally can't do anything when the the, the freaking player that I'm against he has a stun ability that hits me for long enough that his second ability can fire off and I get literally one shot. You can't do anything about it. It's it's not even feasible. The only thing you can do is try your best to be such a good player in this in in, in the match of itself that you can get a one shot kill on one of the enemy players before you get one shot killed that it's it's how that's how crazy smite is especially the higher level skill ceiling there is the only thing you can do is just become a, a, a crazy glass cannon that you can somehow one shot the enemy team one someone on the enemy team and even then that can be difficult but it, you know if you can make it work and happen because sometimes the enemy team is just simply better than your team sometimes you try to one shot the, the only person that's really feasible to one shot you try to one shot them on the enemy team and what's the problem that happens well everyone starts defending that one guy that you can one shot well it's like okay but if i try to attack any of the other players that guy is defending this dude so if i try to in if we have if we're trying to fight fire giant and i try to one shot anyone on their team they're all backing each other up they have superior teamwork prowess we don't so then you're in a weird situation where it's like okay if i'm just not trying to do anything actively i'll just get one shot I can't do anything about that, but if then I try to one-shot anybody, I'm probably not going to get the one-shot because the enemy team is playing together better. I literally, anyone I select, and, and, and there's certain players where it's like you try, you, you, you will be countered actively by that player if you try to one-shot them. So you can, don't even bother trying to one-shot that player because it's not going to work. If you try to one-shot that player, they're just going to one-shot you. That's why you avoid that player and you try to one-shot the other players. What's the issue with this? Again, as I'm detailing here very explicitly, what's the problem here? Is that the very few players that you can one-shot, they're going to be covered by all the other players. So you end up in the situation where it's like, I literally can't win. And I'm trying to do damage. I'm trying to do the best I can. But let's just face it. Our team doesn't have the synergy their team has. When I jump their team, you guys don't do anything. Or when you guys jump in, it's not at the right timing of when I jump in. Because they're nuking us faster than we can nuke them. Whatever it is. There's all these variables you can't control, and at some point, it's just frustrating, and at some point, you're just frustrated with your team, and that makes sense, and I mean, there's very little you can do, but you have all these variables that you cannot control, and you know that you're a good player, you know that you're completely capable at performing for the team or whatever, you, you, or whatever, you know that you're good. But the problem is, is that you're set up with a situation where it doesn't matter how good you are, there's more people who are better. On the enemy team so and, and there's something uh, some deficiency on your team either it's the character that you chose it's just directly imbalanced against all the other characters on the enemy team you don't know but like that's why th this is why i hate smite because there's so many variables that either will make you win or lose and that's the other thing too that i hate is that you will have matches that are super easy where you just you just cream the enemy team and it's like, dude, that wasn't even a comp. I want a competition. That was not even a competition. We literally just blasted them. They, they had no opportunity or chance to win. Literally, they got nuked. Okay, that's not, it's not fun. It's not fun when it's not a competition. So now that sucks too. It's like, okay, so I'm, now this is an anti-competitive experience. I'm just getting a, the, the matchmaker chose that I was going to win. 
So the matchmaker is really bad because it tries to put a lot of bad players on different teams in different matches and that's going to cause a lot of drama and, and there's tons of people who are immature and they just cannot, they, they, they cannot but I should just make a freaking smite review at this point. Or maybe I'll just make this a smite review. Anyway, but you will deal with this problem where it's like there's just so many factors you cannot control. And then people do not have the maturity to deal with, and they don't even have the maturity of outlook and perspective to understand, oh, there's a bunch of factors in this match that we can't control. Okay, guys, whatever. I guess we just can't. And, and by the way, there's matches where you're 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 losing and you're getting freaking railed. You can still win the match. It's just really rough at the start. And people don't have the maturity or the discernment to understand that in this match, there's, there's just there's no effective way for you to win. Or, or right now, there's no effective way to win. Whatever it is. And you have other people who try to drag out matches. You're winning the match, but they try to drag it out. Then you drag it out so far, they, they, they start goofing off. They're being freaking idiots. And then you goof off for so long that then the enemy team catches up and then you lose because they were able to pick it up at the end game and maybe because their characters are really good for late game was it's some kind of reasoning as to why but i mean this is this is the problem and this is what happens is that you're going to just deal with all these give and takes of good bad good bad and and, and people being stupid and the game inherently does so much to be anti-competitive and to destroy any kind of competitive experience that you could be having. It is so unbelievably frustrating. It, it, it will cause you to rage and, and, and manifest anger more than anything under the sun. So you get to a point where you will, you will lose your temper. You will eventually be raging at your own team because you're like, you freaking morons. You're freaking fighting each other. When we just literally need to keep it together, we've got the late game. But if you guys stop working together and you're just biatching and moaning at each other like a bunch of freaking women, we're never going to win this match. Stop it. Freaking man up and just get through the match. And sometimes it's like, guys, there's a, t a teammate on the, on the team. He, j he just sucks. If you watch him play... He literally doesn't listen to anybody. He's literally acting like he's pl he's playing with like like he's on freaking weed or something. I don't know. The guy's a freaking raging moron. Whatever it is, he's not. He he just sucks. He actually sucks. If you look at objectively how he's playing, he is bad at the game. It's over, guys. It's over. They don't have the maturity to just or the discernment to understand these differing variables. At some point, dude, it, like, and this is the issue, there comes a point where you're just, your IQ gated from ever getting anywhere. That's just, that's just the surface of so many problems. There's many other issues, by the way. Um, if you try to play with other players, right? Because, like, what pros do is that they play with other pros. So it's not just you that you can depend upon on the team to get you to the higher uh, skill tiers, right? But now you, you have this other guy that you professionally work with and you're playing against a, a bunch of other people that are not professional players in the game. So what happens, right? And this is how freaking moronic all of it truly is. Is that now, like, I, I, I my gosh, I've played against pros. <laughs> and it's so stupid because when you're playing against pros, Bro, they're they're just they're just clock working you. It's like it's literally their job. And they're playing with other dudes where it's literally their job to play the game. So they're just stomping you. Like you're playing in your lane, and all of a sudden mid lane is coming at you. All of a sudden freaking jungle's coming at you. They're both pro players. The guy you're playing against is also a pro player. And you're just getting freaking they just freaking nuke you. And by the way, because of how the matchmaker works, you're never going to play people that are at the kind of clockwork of a pro. So that's another element of the issue is that you're, you're a fish out of water, right? You're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I've never played a pro before. What the frick is going on? I can't fight these guys. My team isn't filled with pros, number one. And me, I've never been allowed until now to play against a pro. So like I could very well fight a pro and like and so, I mean, right, let's just be honest, at some point, like, a video game is really not that hard, that even, again, there's so many variables, it's really, you're at war against variables, not against skill, right, that's already the point, pre one of the previous points I was making, but it's like, well, very easily, I could learn how to fight pros, right, but, like, this is my first time fighting a pro, or, like, my third or, or fourth time, out of hundreds of times playing up, get up and with a, against a bunch of crappy players, right? A bunch of people who, uh, they're just raging idiots. 
So it's like you're a fish out of water. There's no way you're not right. Put a pro in a team of crappy players long enough and they're going to get worse. It's just the way it is. If you try to have intellectual conversations with raging idiots every day, you're never going to get that far with your ideas talking to them, unlike if you're talking with fellow intellectuals. You have to be able to speak with other intellectuals if you want to have the, the fastest developmental curve in your ideas, in your thoughts. Same thing with, with competition. If you don't play with other fellow high skill level players, you're never going to be able to actually bring up your game. So then this is the other frustrating thing is that anytime you do actually start playing against good players, it's every once in a blue moon. And I mean like actually every once in a blue moon. It's like maybe a yearly thing, uh, bi-yearly, it it's barely happens. So then you're like, what the frick? This is not like the other people I go up against and I'm not against this. But it's like then the other issue is these pros, they play with each other. So it's like you're getting nuked by not just one guy that professionally plays the game, but you're getting nuked by another dude that professionally plays the game. And you're sitting there and you're like, what the frick do I do, bro? How the frick do I fight this? How the frick do I play? The, uh, every, all, it's now it's not just that there's variables I cannot control because of the matchmaker. Now I'm playing against dudes who put some of the variables onto their side, into their court. And they also have a higher likelihood of success than me, right? So it, it, there's just so many things that when you're playing a game like Smite, you're just going to constantly, for one, you're just going to be angry most of the time. You're never going to have a proper competitive experience. You're always going to have these stupid, retarded situations where you don't have a, a proper matchup, a proper competition against both teams. But that's what gets so frustrating is that you have all these variables that you can't control. And then if you do play up against, right, the pros, I mean, right, the pros, they're playing with other pros. It's like, well, I wish I also had another pro that I could depend on to play the game with. Oh, that would be really nice because then I could probably get a lot further. And then this is the other issue, though, playing with other people who are not determined pros. What's the issue with doing that? Well, there comes a point where you realize that maybe someone that you're you're trying to grind up the, the skill ceiling with, they're only as good as a platinum player or a diamond player. Then there just comes a point where they're not that good. You know, you try to hold it out with them for a pretty persistent amount of time and you just realize, okay, it is clear this guy, whatever it is, he cannot get up to a higher skill ceiling or it's the player or... It's their synergy with you. Maybe you with that player, you can only get as far as diamond, right? So then you have to find a different player that you have better synergy with, and he also has skill. But then what's the other issue, right, with all of this, is that you have people who are raging idiots, and they will they will uh, preemptively judge you, right? If you have a couple of bad matches, they'll just be like, oh, you're a freaking idiot, you're bad at the game. And you're like, dude, you're actually the one that's bad at the game. And it's like, you're not even that bad of a player, but you're so ignorant about yourself. You're bad at the game in a lot of ways, and you're not even noticing it because, and that's the thing, you deal with also high skill ceiling players that are raging narcissists, actual narcissists, not when women say narcissists, they're actual narcissists where it's like, dude, you constantly do things that screws over the rest of the team. Because now, and so like you're getting everyone else screwed over, but you think you're so good at the game that you're not at fault. And sometimes you have bad games with these players and they'll sit there and they'll be like, oh, you're bad at the game. It's like, dude, we're just having, I I'm having a couple of bad games. It's like, I'm, I'm usually leading the lobbies. I'm just, I'm failing right now. And you aren't even leading this lobby. Or maybe you were leading last lobby, but you're not leading this one. And, and like they, they always sit there and they're it's every excuse to just trash on somebody else even people that you know but at some point yes it's true that right again this is the problem with people who don't have any discernment most people don't so that's why you have a lot of issues you just end up in a situation where it's like okay either we're no longer conducive to be on a team with each other or there's something wrong with you or right i need to improve but it's like this is the thing though this is why you 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 do competitive games is so that you do challenge yourself so that you do hit the skill ceiling and you have to hit your head up against the wall until you improve and that's why the second that you're having bad games with someone you don't just immediately say that they're bad and like oh you know we're not playing with each other anymore it's only if that happens long enough and they they just never improve ever then you start sitting there and be like okay i might need to find another person if i want to get up higher right and that's just the simple truth of the reality 
But you have so many people who want to get egotistical about it. So many of these freaking losers who are like, oh, you know, because you don't, you're not me. You're bad at the game, bro. Screw you. This can literally be someone that like you used to kind of be friends with. And they'll just outright just say, you're a freaking loser. You, you suck. They'll just hate outright. They'll hate on you. You used to have maybe good laughs with this person or whatever. Like the, these, these are like, these are basically like business relationships. <laughs> no one's a friend with each other. It, the second you're no longer benefiting them, they stab you in the back as hard as freaking possible. It, it's not enough that they're just like, oh, you're bad at the game or whatever. I don't, I don't like you anymore or something like that. It's like, screw you. You're a piece of filth. They'll just start she on you. <laughs> They'll just go out of their way to hate on you, though. And this is someone that you thought that you were chill with. And it's like, yeah, they're only chill with you for as long as you're as as long as you're good at the game in their eyes. And by the way, this is another thing that'll happen if you're nice to them. And this is the thing that I really cannot stand about these freaking about about freaking losers in general, freaking douchebag losers. If they are bad at the game and you bite your tongue and you're just nice to them and you're like, hey, you know, you're not saying anything because you're just, you're right, you know upon yourself, and they should understand this, shouldn't even have to be spoken. But it's like, okay, he's having a bad game. It happens, you know? Every couple of games, it's not going to always go your way, or some days there's just going to be uh, better players playing than the other days, whatever it is. Okay, we're running into some, you know, hiccups, whatever. That's fine. But they, they don't account those circumstances where you bit your tongue when they were playing bad, and you had patience with them. It's the second you're playing bad, and again, this is why I'm, this is what I'm saying. The raging narcissistic children. A lot of these players are, even the people that you know are narcissistic children. Whatever, whatever it is, they're douchebags. And it's the second that you no longer benefit them, even if they're completely wrong and they're just hating on you just to hate on you. Doesn't matter. They're gonna hate on you because they can, and you end up in the kind of crappy situation where. Someone that you've been patient with, someone that you understood, oh, hey, you know, it happens, yeah, bad thing, crappy things, yeah, blah, blah, blah. You have patience with them. The second things go wrong, they're, they're, they're against you, you're an idiot, they're questioning your intelligence, and then they just, they never talk to you again. They just leave you on ghost red. And that's it, that's it. Whatever business relationship you thought you had with that individual, it's over, bro. It's freaking done. You know, and then so so in the end, you have to find someone else to play with. And that and that's the thing, though. I mean, it's never a friendship when you're playing with people playing these games. And um, and, the, and the thing is, is that it's because you're ever having jokes with these people or you're ever being kind of amicable with them. You, you can't help it. You're going to get into the mindset of, oh, you know, we're kind of friends. Like, even if in the back of your head, you're like, you know, this could go south at any second. You're like, oh, you know, we're kind of friends. You know, we're kind of getting along. And then all of a sudden, that moment just happens. You know, snap of the fingers. It's done, bro. They're freaking against you. And it just comes absolutely out of nowhere. You know, you're wrong. You're evil. And they're benevolent. And they're right. You know, you know, they're the ones with purity, and you're the one that is the befouled creature. It is incredibly frustrating, because that also adds to how much you will be embittered by the experience, because you're going through lobbies of crappy people, and then the people that you try to vest any kind of camaraderie with, because you, you, you also try to be nice to each other, so that, right? I mean, you're on the same team. You can't just like deep down inside feel like or know that's like, oh, we're about to backstab each other and then like in the next two seconds of the next match, right? You can't help it. You can't avoid it. You try to develop an amicable relationship with the people that you're working alongside. And the simple truth of the matter, though, is that there does, there will come that moment, there will come that time where you will just be freaking backstabbed as hard as humanly possible. And it's not just like, oh, you know, it's just not working anymore, us playing together. It's screw your existence, bro. You're a freaking idiot. And uh, you need to work on your existence. It is it is insane. So I mean, it, it just becomes taxing because it's like, wow. I mean, like, you know, either you've got to build so much distance with the people that you're playing the game with, where it's like you just never get close to them. You're always giving them a cold shoulder or... I don't know. You, it, 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 it's so bad. It's so bad. The, the developers are freaking liberal. And that 
freaking morons, but this is outside of their politics. This is just how crappy people are, right? So when you play these kinds of games, you just deal with this crappy nature of just trashy people. So even if you try to be nice to people, though, eventually it will bat bite you in the uh, in the freaking butt. I mean, the nicer you are, typically the more you're going to get uh, walked all over as well. You will be railroaded very hard because if you're not a douchebag to them, a raging douchebag, because basically you have to be a douchebag. If you're going to call out all their deficiencies, then the next time they call out your deficiencies, it's like, all right, okay, wait, I'm, you know, he he's always been calling out my deficiencies, even when they do pop off on you and they're like, ah, oh, this, that about you. They're still in the back of their head there. It, it's going to temper them back a little bit. It's like, okay, he did call out when I was being trash in all those different ways. It's really weird. I mean, there just comes an absolute point where you have to be wicked overcritical. Uh, and of course, it's not wise to be overcritical. You're kind of training yourself to have a bit of a rash mind or a rash approach of the mind if you do that. And also it's a waste of energy just being critical of someone when it's not necessary. But that's a problem. If you don't do it when it's not even necessary, then when the time comes that they're going to be a raging douchebag to you, right? So you get you, across the chronology of these certain situations. When you meet these randos in these lobbies or you're playing with people that you know, you're always going to have a whole range of issues. And ultimately, it's just a part of the experience. It's just going to suck, you know. And you just, you figure it out. You figure out how to make it work. But it is, in its own way, it's taxing to some level. It's very frustrating in its own essence. So that, that that's just a couple of the issues that you will run into, though. A good number of them, really. That you're going to run into when you're playing with other people. With pros, obviously it's different. Even the pros, sometimes they'll even dislike each other and all that. But yeah, nah, I mean, for the most part, they have the little clicks and they figure out who they're mostly okay with. But even they will at some point, they'll silently curve each other. So that's different for them. They won't just outright show that level of disrespect. It's when you're playing with non-pros, basically the plebeians. When you're playing with the plebeians, that's where you get the plebeian behaviors. Where everyone's just, it, the vitriol is up to freaking 9,000. Ah, uh, man, it, it, it's just it's just unnecessary drama. You just want to have a good competitive experience and it's constant unnecessary drama. And it does things over time to your psychology. You're like, okay, you know what? Uh, the more I take this seriously, the more I see, the more angry I get because you're having all this constant conflict with randos, the people on your team, the person that you knew for a while playing the game. And eventually you just say, you know what? I'm just going to stop giving such a big crap about it. I'm just going to be casually competitive. And then when you become casually competitive, holy effing crap, you're still going to get freaking crapped on. You're still going to get uh, raged at by a freaking moron because it's like, right? If you're casually competitive, they're going to be like, oh, why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing that? Oh, this. Oh, that. Oh, the other thing. They're, they're just going to be raging at you because then you're not putting your all into it. You're not taking it absolutely seriously, which you never really should completely take it seriously. But at the very, the, the bare minimum that you owe your team is just teamwork. That's the only thing that you owe to your team is teamwork. But if you're trying to take it right, casually competitive, right? You're not trying to be a jerk off and screw your team over. But you're like, dude, I'm not going to take this so seriously. That it's like battle of life and death with somebody on my team as to how well any of us are performing. Eventually, there's going to be someone that's that's telling you, right? One of these douchebags, which is pretty much the majority of the lobbies you're going to get into. One of these douchebags that you will meet in multiple lobbies who will sabotage a lobby because they find something wrong with you. So they then become the problem themselves. And it's and you, you, you're not even the problem. They just make it up that you're the problem. Let's just say you're having a bad game. They'll just say that you're the problem. And now they start sabotaging the match. Now they just, they, it's, it's, a, it's a death spiral is what happens. So then you start having these issues where now it's like, okay, now I'm, I'm trying to be casually competitive, but now you got these raging douchebags that because I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not freaking sweating my freaking anus off where I'm burning calories as I'm playing this freaking video game. Now this guy is going to be raging at me saying, you're an idiot. You're this blah, 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 you know, just spamming their keyboard and or whatever their controller. And you're just like, oh my gosh, dude, there's no way to win. There's no way to win. This is why I hate freaking smite. 
because at the at the end of the day, there's no way to win. You just want to have a good competitive experience, but the more seriously you take it, you're going to run into a lot of problems. It's going to vex you over time, and eventually you're just going to have an absolute form, an unrelenting form of seething hatred for not only the player base, but the entire experience. Overall, the conduct is just terrible between players. Um, outside of like any wokeness, the main issue is the conduct between players. You have raging idiots, douchebags, who they, they just don't have any maturity. And the, the innate issue of what happens is that they turn a situation, they turn a match that could be won into a match that is lost. That is the main problem, and that is the main frustration. It's like, we could have won this, but because you chose to be a raging, belligerent child, we lost. And so that's what happens. You have a lot of players, then, who become also incredibly embittered. And uh, at some point, you know, I held out for a long time, but eventually just got, it, it wore down on me. Where it's like, I eventually got embittered. I was sitting there... And I'm like, geez, at least, man, I'm the only one that gives a crap. And even as the guy that is the only one that gives a crap, I'm being trashed on by crappier teammates and players. I'm being trashed on by these freaking losers for not playing how they think I should play. Because then there's this whole issue about how reserved should you be, right? How conservative should you be about your attack patterns or your decision making yeah attack patterns but also your decision making your kind of stratagems within the game like when, when should you jump into a fight and when should you pull back when is it that your teammates being an idiot and he's basically getting himself killed and when is it that i need to jump in there and help my teammate and then even that might not work out it's always a coin toss it's always largely most of the time it's not dependable but you, you're always going to have this issue where proper decision making and how aggressive and how conservative or defensive that you need to be or conservative in your estimations as to when should we be picking fights and when should we not be so there's a bunch of things regarding that it just becomes difficult because you have some people who want to be uber uh, aggressive more than is even realistic it's like dude you want us to be super aggressive we don't have the characters, we don't have the builds, we don't... Whatever it is, there's a bunch of variables as to why we are not right now able to be super aggressive. You are. You picked an overpowered character, so you're able to be super aggressive. We get in there, and we just end up feeding the enemy team. Then there's other times where it's like, you do need to be more aggressive, and your, your team is being uber conservative. And they're just, they're just never jumping into a fight. And they're sitting there and they're like, farm. They, they just, they spam into the chat. So farm, just farm guys, just farm. And it's like, no, get into the freaking fight. We can win the freaking fights. You're just choosing for some random reason not to get into the fight. When this team is capable, our team is capable of aggression. We're not crappy players. We're not this, we're not that. We are completely capable of getting in, into the contact get in there you're holding back the rest of the team by not even playing and that's the issue that's the issue is that you also deal with these players who they they just don't understand when to get into a fight and when not to is it making sense yet <laughs> there's so there are innumerable problems and, and there's no way that you can actually if you try to talk it out with them if you try to have a conversation about it and you're, you're trying to work it through and you're like okay listen dude this isn't working right now and let let me explain to you why Bro, you're playing a real-time lobby. There's no time to be reasonable and logical with someone and tell them how to how to think and how to approach the match. And and like, how do you find the proper amount of words to explain to them the fullest breadth of a relevant thought or uh, thought process? It's impossible. You can't do it because then they're even if you're right, they're going to say you're wrong. They're going to fight you on it. It's like, dude, you keep on pushing into uh, engagements before the team's ready, before the team's even there. You, you just, it's not because he has a good kill that he can get. If he has a good kill he can get, okay, fine. Then we, as the, as the remaining teammates, we need to figure out how to get the remaining kills, right? Well, the issue is, you have certain players, they just wanna freaking jump into the fight. They're getting uber ahead of themselves. And you're like, what is this guy doing? He, he's just get he's offing himself every time he respawns what the frick is going on he literally has no teamwork bone in his body and, it, and then here's the problem right 
Okay, so, right? The guy's not listening. He's being a raging moron. Uh, a douchebag. Uh, okay, the whole nine yards. Fine, whatever. So then you try to accommodate it. You're like, okay, I can't have a freaking w keyboard warrior spitting match with this guy because that's not going to win us the game. It's not going to get anyone to figure out what the frick we need to be doing. So then you just sit there and you're like, fine. I'm not going to spam anything. I'm just going to follow around the guy that's offing himself every 24 seconds. Problem when you start doing this, well, maybe the rest of your team isn't following you when you do that. And then they get pissed at you. And then they start getting toxic. And they start biatching at you and being like, oh, you're bad players. And oh, these two players, they're throwing the game. And it's like, oh my gosh, bro. There's no feasible way to get the team to work together and synergize. And, you, and again, it's a waste of time to be like, no, dude, we need to just follow the guy that's offing himself so that we have any kind of a chance to win the match and then that guy's getting all pissy and he's like i'm just done and he just he just goes idle and then you just it's like oh my gosh even your solutions become problems and so it's like there's just no way there's no way there's no way you can't take absolute responsibility for the situation and be like okay even though this player is being a raging dumas i'm going to go out of my way and try to make this crap work Oh, oh, well, sorry. The problem is, is that now the other players are becoming a problem with you and now they're against you. And here's the other problem. When people start calling you an idiot and they're against you and they're all like, ah, uh, you know, screw you, jungle or solo lane. And you know, that's, that's the role that you picked. And they're like, screw you, you suck at the game and you're a piece of filth and you know, you now you're feeding them just like that guy and blah, blah, blah. When you start having all this freaking drama, you end up in a situation where it's like, okay, now, if I'm trying to strategize with these people and say, no, go here, do this. Hey, guys, we need to be doing that. No, we need to be doing that. They are already doing everything in their power to not only demoralize themselves and you, but now they're also trying to discredit you. So now when you sit there and you're trying to strategize with them, you're like, okay, hey, guys, you know, I'm, again, I've already described everything about you're trying to do your best. You're trying to make everything work. And it's just freaking up to nine freaking impossible. Oh, my gosh, dude. I, I mean, is, is the point getting any more clear? <laughs> Bro, it's so bad. It, it's so bad playing Smite because people are just raging douchebags. And again, they, they'll do everything in their power to discredit you. So then when you're sitting there and you're trying to uh, strategize with your team and you're like, hey guys, we need to do this. Hey guys, we need to do that. They're like, no, screw you. You're throwing the game. Says the guy that's feeding. Says the guy that's feeding. Ugh. Screw you, player. You're feeding. You're a feeder, bro. And you're just like, oh my gosh, dude. I'm freaking busting my freaking on noose. I am trying to work with you freaking losers. And all you want to do is bicker and babble like a bunch of freaking women at each other. All you want to do is hate on each other. All you want to do is freaking cause problems for each other. There's no effective way for us to operate as a team when everyone is bickering like this. It's over. It's over. If, you, if you're not going to work with your team and you're not going to have the maturity to understand the kind of crappy situation that the matchmaker put you up with, then it's like, okay, okay I guess we lost. So the, and, and again, and then you're like, okay, well, hopefully next match doesn't turn out like that. And then it's a coin toss because of the matchmaker. You're probably going to deal with that bull crap again. And if it happens again, it just wears down on you. And eventually the, you just have a match where you're just, you, you, you're, you're now you're just keyboard warrioring at the freaking at your team and you're like what the frick is going on with you freaking losers you're all trying to freaking bicker with each other rather than work together you freaking idiots oh my gosh well and we already know where that goes but like you at that point you just implode you're just like i'm freaking fed up with the freaking everyone going to war with each other and like no matter what you do you can't you can't be bigger than the freaking bull crap everyone wants to be a, a biatching freaking female about it, the game so then you end up in a crappy situation where you're just going to lose a match and you're wasting your time playing this video game officially and uh that's why looking back i wish i you know there's a certain extent where playing the game was fine but i do wish looking back i didn't play it as much as i did i should have put down that game way sooner when, when it came clear that's like okay i i can't do anything to help these matches go any better when you have these different players who just for some reason nobody wants to learn or figure out how to work together and be a proper team everyone just wants to bicker at each other and fight with each other and and like basically have plebeian freaking battles with each other because th this is the way that freaking losers think man it, it absolute plebeian economics kind of thinking or whatever the heck you want to call it 
it, it's loser thinking that it's like everyone just wants to bicker. Everyone just wants to fight. No one has the maturity to say, what's the freaking solution here? Let's make it happen. No, it's the only way we're going to get out of this is that either you bend the knee and you let me speak down to you. Or if you don't allow me to speak down to you, you just you get in the mud with me. And now we just fight each other for no good reason. So either you allow me to speak down to you. Or you get in the mud with me and none of, none of us win. And now we're all just angry at each other. And now you're stooping down to my level, basically. And now you're just hating on me and I'm hating on you. And, and let's say, right, you're not even hating on them back. The inherent issue is that even if you're not hating on them, because, right, I mean, that's that, that stuff is loser mentality. But like, even if you're trying to reason and process with them, and maybe that's like your own form of hating back on them. It's like, dude, do you hear yourself talking? This isn't working. If you're trying to reason and process with them, again, they'll just freaking go after you they'll just be like oh you know screw you this and it, again it doesn't matter it, whatever whatever your recourse is against the freaking douchebag loser it's just anarchy in the end it's just anarchy it, you're, you're you're arguing with a bunch of plebeians who have no maturity these are freaking losers and it's called stop playing the freaking video game that's what it's called that's the only thing you can do stop playing the video game you're only hanging around losers do something different with your life bro that's what it comes down to and that's why i hate smite that's why i hate a lot of multiplayer games now um is because not every multiplayer game you're gonna have these issues but there's a lot of them you are and a lot of them are like this. League of Legends, obviously, is like this. And it basically what these games really are and what they become is that you're dealing with people who are the problem and they're going to gaslight the living daylights out of you that somehow you are the problem. Seriously, just process with how reasonable that is. How are you supposed to deal with a situation like that? When someone is the problem, but they are berating you, telling you that you are the problem. How are you supposed to deal with that situation? How are you supposed to feasibly deal with a situation where someone's the problem, they're creating problems, you cannot create the solution with or through this person, it's impossible. What are you supposed to do? What are you supposed to feasibly do? How are you supposed to talk to, uh, what, what, you allow them to tell you that you're the mistake? That you're the problem? So you allow them to create a fallacious reality, a fictitious reality, where they're not the issue, even though they are, you are, so now you're fixing their problem even though you're not the core of the problem. They're the, they're the source of the illness. They're the virus. And the virus is telling you that you're the virus and that you need to do something about curating yourself. The virus is telling the cure that the cure is the virus. Tell me how that inverse on reality, how that works. How are you supposed to solve that situation? You're not. And this is probably why there's been a lot of wars in history. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest. That's probably why a lot of cultures have gone to war. A lot of civilizations, that's probably why they've gone to war with each other, whether they're uh, of different races or the same race, it doesn't matter. Because eventually, the ethics of these opposing groups of opposing people, eventually, there's just no solution and people have, you butt heads so much, it's like, okay, the only way we get out of this is by going to war, all right? So we're going to have a 300 year war, um, we're going to go against your people, you're going to go against our people, even if we look alike, it doesn't matter, because screw you, you're a bunch of freaking idiots, you never listen to us when we try to figure things out with you, so um, it's over, bro. We are either going to dominate you or we are going to subjugate your entire culture, your entire people people because the conflict that's at hand and that's why we have philosophy and that's why we have a lot of the things that we have it's to negate childish or really not even childish foolish behaviors within mankind it really is what it comes down to that's the core importance behind good storytelling for one good stories resolve conflict it, it's a simulation of conflict it's also many other things it's also spiritual vessel of translating value but again we're passing down value or ideals virtues whatever but again this th this is why we have storytelling this is why we have philosophy this is why we have things like psychology which psychology came out of philosophy and now psychology is just made by freaking degenerate morons leftards it's made by leftards but it it's playing freaking mobas or it's playing multiplayer games though that you realize oh my gosh this is why we had wars throughout history there just comes a point where it's like oh Oh, you're the illness, and you're telling me I'm the disease. Okay, okay. This isn't going to work, bro. So then you go to war, and then everything goes the way it goes. And, and then you, you try when you're... Hopefully, you're the winner in the war, which... 
Honestly, typically, if you're at war against a raging idiot, typically the idiot's going to lose. Because why? Well, the idiot is always going to demoralize their own forces. So what does that mean, right? I mean, typically they are the ones who will lose if you're having that kind of a war against a, a raging idiot kind of culture or whatever. A culture that's just filled to the brim with a bunch of degenerates or douchebags, whatever. Then yeah, you're probably going to win the war. And then in that in that outcome in that resolution you know and that's that's the hope is that okay we're going to go to war and as we continue forward as civilization we're not going to lead in the image of those douchebags and of course nowadays the raging idiot douchebags have become the liberals in more ways than freaking one but that's a whole other conversation it looks different nowadays but throughout history yeah absolutely you can see that that's something that's happened a lot so anyways, that's why I hate Smite though. Um, when you look at a game like Smite, Smite is the kind of game where you're playing with the kind of crappy players who they will always hold you back. And you will never know how truly good or bad you are out of the video game you're playing. You'll never know. The innate purpose is that you want to challenge yourself and play against tougher and tougher players. You want to have failure right you don't want to freaking win every match that's the other issue is that you're going to play in lobbies where people expect to win every match it's like no no you're playing a competitive video game the purpose is you want to cream through all the bad players so that you can eventually work through the the elo ranking or right the competitive ranking you want to eventually get to the point where you're playing against better and better players so that why why so that you can freaking right challenge yourself against the best players of course that's not how the matchmakers are designed sadly again a lot of matchmakers are socialist matchmakers they put the best and the worst on the same teams but despite that issue when you play these games you realize that your entire experience is deficient and it is antithetical to your entire purpose for playing the game